I'm Bisma Skaran, a specialist in animal production and animal management, and also expert in mushroom farming. Welcome back to Kilimo Fida TV. I'm your host, as usual, Biki Mani. And you know, for you to have a high yielding cow, the same way you need to have a good plan. And a plan is not just having a good structural design or maybe having a big house, but the practices that you're doing there. That's why I've been guided that because we have our experts here, an expert who majors in livestock production, and that's majorly on animal nutrition and feeding is going to give it bare what we need to do what they are doing to get that cow at the highest yielding levels why don't we give him our ears our eyes we see it from him so kalibu mtalam karibu so you're speaking to bernard kinimo finder tv who are you i'm bismas karan expert in animal production and health management i'm near in kaimosi i'm also a expert in food formulation and also in dairy management. Okay. Welcome. So thank you. So I see you are young. Kalibu Gen Z. Wakati ukiingia Kalibu ni sema yule ni nani alafu nikaambiwa huyo ni mtaalamu muangalie vizuri. So like in your journey of livestock feeding, what are some of the success stories that motivate you maybe after maybe managing some cows or maybe someone you trained and you got a very impactful story? Okay, something that motivates me, especially dairy farming, mm -hmm. is having passion. Mm -hmm. When you have passion and you see every day you wake up, mm -hmm. you see your animals healthier, mm -hmm. they can move, mm -hmm. all the things, mm -hmm. and also the production. Mm -hmm. The most part is the production, the okay. milk production. Okay. That's why we are interested. Okay. And uh, the best way uh, I'm happy always, mm -hmm. when a farmer comes here, mm -hmm. I train about feeding. Okay. And then he goes back home. Mm -hmm. yeah. The successful stories that I'm getting that since I came there, mm -hmm. you you taught me about feeding mm -hmm. and the production cost has reduced. Okay. That is where I'm much interested. Okay. Reaching the farmer to reduce the cost okay. of production. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I've been told that, or I was about to ask a question about feeding and I was told, no, the expert is here. And I see it's the right time the cows are feeding. What are you feeding them? And why are you feeding them <laughs> this time? Okay, here yeah. we are doing um, what we call TMR. Okay. And before even we reach there, mm -hmm. I have a structural where mm -hmm. I will come first in mm -hmm. before doing feeding. Okay. What a farmer should know mm -hmm. before even starting a dairy farm. Wow, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. You know, most farmers mm -hmm. think that... Um, Feeding is the only way mm -hmm. to get milk. Okay. Particularly, we have other essentials. Mm -hmm. So, in a short time mm -hmm. that you will give me, mm -hmm. I want to tell you uh, about the essentials yes. that a farmer should know mm -hmm. before starting even a dairy farm. Mm -hmm. So, and the, one, the first essential mm -hmm. is having good quality forage wow. throughout the year and wow. water. Okay. That is the first essential. Mm -hmm. You should have good quality forage, forage. throughout the year and enough grazing land. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Another, the second essential is the breed. Okay. You need to have good quality breeds with a good economic character traits of a dairy cow. So you need no general animal husbandry. Mm -hmm. The rearing of animals, mm -hmm. structures, mm -hmm all maintenance that you need to do, mm -hmm. daily routine, mm -hmm. all of them. That is the third essential, mm -hmm. general animal husbandry. Mm -hmm. Now the fourth essential, disease and parasite control. Mm -hmm. You need to focus on that. Now you will engage the fat now in disease and parasite control. Always call a fat to advise you on that. Uh, another essential, or uh, the fifth one mm -hmm. is land settlement and title deeds. Mm -hmm. As a farmer, you need to have a you, have, you need a, to have a land. Mm -hmm. You cannot do a dairy farming without a land on the roads. On the roads, <laughs> so you need to have. Mm -hmm. And then the last <laughs> essentials is mm -hmm. the good government policies towards uh, dairy farming. Mm -hmm. So also government will chip in mm -hmm. in terms of 
dairy farming wow. with good policies. Wow. Um, now I'm coming back to where I was, the yes. feeding. Yes. What you need yes. as, a, as a farmer yes. and also what we should give your animals. So today I will just talk about the feeding. feeding. So in feeding, we have, a, we have two categories in feeding. Yes. We have what we call maintenance ratio. Mm -hmm. That is the types of rations that we have. Yes. Maintenance ratio and production ratio. So in maintenance ratio, generally I'm talking about keeping your animals just to move, mm -hmm. to see the cow health. Mm -hmm. That is the maintenance, to maintain that cow. To be and alive. Anyway. To be alive. And then now we come to production. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of production, there is things that you will consider. Now that this this my animal, mm -hmm. I have read the maintenance target. Mm -hmm. Now I want this cow to produce. Yes. Now there is um, other feeds mm -hmm. that I will I will use. Mm -hmm. um, in the maintenance ratio, mm -hmm. it's known that when you give your animals good, your balance will be your ration will be balanced in dairy farming. And now that that was about maintenance ratio when you have give your animals. So in terms of where will you get energy? And nowadays silage is the best source of energy for cows. You know when you when you sell your silage, that is the maize corn, you will get energy and also protein and also crude fiber in it. So that is the best for maintenance. Silage is the best for maintenance. Also, these grasses, like um, this napier grass, mm -hmm. it has a percentage of crude protein, meaning at your ratio, you will have enough protein, enough uh, carbohydrates, that is energy, and also vitamins. We all know that um, green grass has uh, vitamins and also other minerals. So it will be the best source of protein and vitamins when you have this grass. We have um, minerals. Make sure you are giving your animals minerals at, lip, at lipidum without measuring. Like for example, when um, you will see there, we have some uh, kind of mineral blocks for our cows. Uh, so anytime they, they need it, they go there and lick. So we don't measure the minerals. Now I'm, I come to why, where, how do we feed these forages before going to production ratio? Uh, for us here, we are feeding our animals three times a day, and there is reason behind it. You know, uh, when you give uh, your animals, maybe for example this forage, there is a way we measure it. An animal, we feed them according to their body weight, and a cow can consume a third of his body weight in dry matter basis. Okay. That is around 12 kg dry matter basis. When you convert, because we have converted, it's around three candy packs of silage a day. That is around 60 to 90 kgs, depending with the body weight of a cow. But that's now all for it that we have, we have mixed. So it's uh, like, a, like in this case, you have the mixed jar of of all, uh, uh, of all, are, like, yeah, eating for maintenance. Yeah, for maintenance. Like we have um, silage yes. as a one material. Yes. We have uh, this supernapia grass yes. as one of the materials. We also have desmodium yes. as one of the materials, and we also have super K fans. That is we sweet potato. We mix it. We have chafkata that we chop them and mix it, and we also have uh, pomeroids A in terms of dry mother basis. So we mix them and give to our cows. So we give them three times a day. The reason behind it is that we want them to finish all of them. We want them to finish that meal. You know, when you give, uh, for example, when, when you give three kind of packs, all of them once, they will consume and then they left it there. Yes. Others will come, they just see and they will not be satisfied because they have contaminated it. Yes. But when you give in the morning, Delicious. the ration, yes. you give in the morning, they finish, you come now mid morning, yes. they finish, and also in the, in the evening. That's now it's a, just your routine management, depending with your 
your farm. But uh, what I can advise farmer is that what you need to do, just don't give all of them. Yeah, I think maybe you have any question after that. After that? Uh, I feel like I'm really consuming and I hope for our farmers, you're really getting it as I'm yeah. getting it. So direct from an expert. So that's for maintenance. Yeah. Now this cow that we are calling maintenance, what will you inform me now that I'm going to production? Now, when you have met a maintenance ratio, a cow at the um, foundation stage can give you up to 10 liters of milk without any supplement. When you give good quality forage, that cow can give you 10 kilos of, of milk a day without any supplement. So that's it. So now it will be a transition for you to go now to production production ratio. So could that be the reason as to why maybe many farmers are still at that foundation? You find a farmer maybe giving poor fall, poor foliage and then they give some concentrates. Does it work? Your balance will be, your ration will be balanced in dairy farming. And now that that was about maintenance ratio. When you have give your animals. So in terms of where will you get energy? And nowadays Silage is the best source of energy for cows. You know, when you when you sell your silage, that is the maize corn, mm -hmm. you will get energy and also protein and also crude fiber in it. Mm -hmm. So that is the best for maintenance. Silage is the best for maintenance. Also, these grasses, like um, this napier grass, mm -hmm. it has a percentage of crude protein, meaning at your ratio, you will have enough protein and have a carbohydrates that is energy and also vitamins. We all know that um, green grass has uh, vitamins and also other minerals. So it will be the best source of protein and vitamins when you have this grass. We have um, minerals. Make sure you are giving your animals minerals at, lip at lipidum without measuring. Like for example, when um, you will see there, we have some uh, kind of mineral blocks for our cows. Yes. Uh, so anytime they, they need it, they go there and lick. So we don't measure the minerals. Now I'm, I come to why, where, how do we feed these forages before going to production ratio? Uh, for us here, we are feeding our animals three times a day. And there is reason behind it. You know, uh, when you give uh, your animals, maybe for example, this forage, there is a way we measure it. An animal, we feed them according to their body weight. Okay. And a cow can consume a third of his body weight okay. in dry matter basis. Okay. That is around 12 kg mm -hmm. dry matter basis. When you convert, mm -hmm. because we have converted, it's around three candy packs of silage a day. That is around 60 to 90 kgs, depending on the body weight of a cow. But that's now all forage that we have, we have mixed. So it's uh, like, a, like in this case, you have the mixture of, of all. That's uh, uh, of all, like. yeah. We are eating for maintenance. Yeah, for maintenance. Like we have um, silage yes. as a one material. Yes. We have uh, this supernapia grass yes. as one of the materials. We also have desmodium as one of the materials and we also have super k fans that is sweet potato we mix it we have chafkata that we chop them and mix it and we also have uh, pomeroids a in terms of dry matter basis so we mix them and give to our cows so we give them three times a day the reason behind it is that we want them to finish all of them we want them to finish that meal you know, when you give, uh, for example, when, when you give three kind of packs, mm -hmm. all of them once, they will consume, and then they left it there. Yes. Others will come, they just see, yes. and they will not be satisfied because they have contaminated it. Yes. But when you give in the morning, the ratio, yes. you give in the morning, they finish, you come now mid-morning, they finish, and also in the, in the evening. That's now it's a, just a routine management depending with your, your farm. But uh, what I can advise farmer is that what you need to do, 
just don't give all of them. Yeah, I think maybe you have any question after that. After that, uh, I feel like I'm really consuming, and I hope for our farmers, you're really getting it as I'm yeah. getting it. So, direct from an expert. So, that's for maintenance. Yeah, now this cow that we are calling maintenance, what will you inform me now that I'm going to production? Now, when you have met a maintenance ratio, a cow at the um, foundation stage can give you up to 10 liters of milk without any supplement. When you give good quality forage, that cow can give you 10 kilos of, of milk a day without any supplement. So that's it. So now it will be a transition for you to go now to production production ratio. So could that be the reason as to why maybe many farmers are still at that foundation? You find a farmer maybe giving poor fall, poor foliage and then they give some concentrates. Does it work? <laughs> now I, I will come to that to that now. When we are, I just talk about forage. Yes. So in rations we have forage and concentrates. Yes. Now I'm coming to concentrates. Yes. So forage go hand in hand with maintenance. And then, then production go hand in hand with concentrates. So that's it. Now I'm transiting it to production. I think I want to go before you yeah. and ask this question. So does it mean there's no way I can be in production and rely 100% on forage, despite the, the various nutrition aspects of the forage? Uh, the reason why we, we have even this grass, we want to reduce the concentrate that we are giving to our cows. We know concentrates mostly is, uh, we purchase them. We, can, we can't grow them in our farms. So that's why the scientists they have chipped in and also those who love agriculture, they have brought us this kind of species that has those materials that we have, we need. Because we need protein and we need energy so that's why they have brought us this kind of supernapia with crude protein we have desmodium we have uh, saspania we have lucerne so when you use that to give your animals meaning you will use minimal concentrates i think now I even will... you can go even using zero concentrates okay yeah because what actually you are supplementing is energy and protein I think I now want to go to production. Yeah. Tell me how I'm getting you over 10 to that. Okay, in production ratio, yes. that's now the supplement. Actually, I'm talking about dairy meal. Yes. You are supplementing your cow with dairy meal. Mm -hmm. And for us here, we have a, I, I talk about a, something called TMR, total mixed ratio. Yes. And for us here, we are doing, a, we are supplementing our cows with two types of uh, concentrates. Yes. We have the formulated one, where we formulate our own. We purchase the materials and then formulate. And also, we have the purchased one, ready-made dairy meal. We purchase them and we also use them during milking time. So, in TMR, that's now mixing the forage and concentrates. So, we always use the, fo the one we formulate to give to, our, to animals and mix with with forage in a flat rate. When I say flat rate, meaning that every cow consumes the same concentrate. Like for us here, we have uh, 21 lactating cows. So in the morning, we give uh, 21 kilos of formulated dairy meal so to mix with KG for yeah, a kg for each. Mid morning, the same. In the evening, we replace formulated uh, dairy meal with machicha for them to be palatable, and then they give that aroma to consume more. Yeah. So we are, that's, the, that's what we, do, we are doing here. That is for TMR. Yes. Now, when we come to, now during milking, we give dairy meal to a cow depending with her production. We are not doing, again, flat rate. So we can call it like the whole time to 